is from software's newest video game causing you to lose all of your hair? Has Sekiro Shadows Die Twice forced you to put a controller, or maybe even two, through your television set? If so, know that you're not alone. Welcome back to the Overly Committed channel. This is for the love of the game, and I have spent the last few days dying, dying, and well, dying again, and just playing out getting my booty kicked all throughout the vast land of From Software's newest game. But I have never had more fun getting my butt kicked. And during that time of full on ass kickery, I was able to create a list of 10 things that I believe are vital to know when starting out a brand new adventure in Sekiro. Tip number 10, this is not a Soulsborne game. Trust me, I come from the line of Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Bloodborne, and I love those games, and I love this game, but it is something completely different. If you come from the games such as Bloodborne or this new Dark Souls 3, you're probably used to rolling all over the place, using those invulnerability frames to dodge all incoming attacks. Sekiro is not like that. Learn to parry. Parry, parry, parry. In each fight you encounter, there's going to be a posture mini game within each little fight, and you're going to be adjusting for position for that posture. As you weed down someone's posture, the closer they're going to get to getting that ever satisfying death blow. You'll need to know when to parry, when to jump over sweeps, or when to watch out for thrust attacks. Something I would recommend is early on buying the Makiri counter in the skill tree, which allows you to then dodge directly into thrust and have another tool in your tool belt to help fight these vast amount of enemies you're going to encounter throughout the landscape. Each encounter is a new dance. It's full of clashing steel, swift movements, and quick reactions. Once you learn it, it's just as beautiful as all the other Soulsborne games, if not even more beautiful. Tip number nine. He can't die, and he wants to help. Let's just keep this one sweet and simple. If you've powered up Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, you've probably seen the dead guy hanging out by your home base in the dilapidated temple. Use him. He is there for training. As you progress throughout From Software's newest game, you're going to learn a bunch of new skills, and maybe you're unsure on how to use them. Some things like counters, or new action attacks, maybe you're just curious and you want to get better at parrying on time. Go back to your central hub, go to the temple, and with this man, you can now practice your counters or tell him what skills you want to practice. Use him to make you the deadliest shinobi you possibly can. Tip number eight, explore, explore, explore. Like most of From Software's games, the world and Sekiro is huge and full of interconnections. Everything intertwines and you'll find that pathways will usually lead you back to a place you've already been. This is a 3D world. Make sure you're looking up, looking down, going around all trees, and using your prosthetic tool to get you into all sorts of places. If you see that little green circle, that's indicating that you can use your grapple to get you somewhere. Don't be afraid to go and explore. You can always backtrack if needed. There are so many things hidden throughout this world, and you need to explore it all. Multiple areas and multiple bosses can all be done in any crazy order you want. The world is there for you to explore. This is an amazing connected world, and if you don't explore it, you're going to miss out on so many things. Exploring the world is going to lead to those mini boss fights, and mini bosses drop prayer beads, which you will then use those prayer beads to level up your max vitality. This is just another reason to keep exploring for those hidden mini bosses to make you the most deadliest shinobi possible. You can also use hidden doors, they are scattered throughout the world, and they're not activated like you used to with Bloodborne or with Dark Souls by attacking a wall or rolling through it. In this case, you're going to use that hug wall mechanic by pressing the X button or square depending on your console. Your guy will line up against the wall and that'll actually take you into another room and it is Sekiro's version of the hidden wall mechanic. So please explore everything or fear on missing out on a ton of stuff. Tip number seven backtrack when needed. Now this goes hand in hand with our previous tip of exploring the vast world that From Software has to offer. But this world is not meant to go in a linear direction. If you're having trouble with a boss, backtrack. The odds are you've missed something that could probably use you to help defeat that big baddie. Maybe you've missed some items or prosthetic tools that have been scattered throughout the world that will help you 
defeat these enemies in an easier way. This game is not set up to beat bosses in a certain order. It wants you to explore, and if something is seeming like it just doesn't fit, or maybe it's too hard, the odds are you've gone further than what you need to, and you can backtrack, find some items to then help you with those fights that you find that you're having trouble with. The game is designed for backtracking to be a key piece of how this game is played. Take advantage of it. Tip number six. Just one more hit. Last one. Promise. Put it on everything. Last time. Let's be honest. That one last hit usually isn't worth it. Especially if you're a Soulsborne player, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Swinging that sword just one too many times and getting caught by that one death blow by the enemy boss that completely hundred to zeros you. That last one hit is what's going to kill you. You have to understand that you don't have a death blow mechanic. So if you and your enemy boss are each one kill away from hitting each other, if you guys hit each other at the exact same time, he will go into death blow stance, but you are just going to die. Instead of smacking that hit button one more time, take a step back, parry that incoming attack, and then finish him off with one single thrust of your sword. Trust me, you are going to save yourself many, many, many loading screens by holding off on that one more hit. Now don't get me wrong, mashing the attack button is okay, especially on weaker opponents. It breaks their posture and allows for a death blow extremely fast. And don't be embarrassed to swing that sword, baby. As a lot of Soulsborne players know, smack that booty on the bigger enemies, but do it intelligently. If you know that an attack is coming, don't try to sneak in one more hit. Just parry that attack or roll safely and then proceed with that next follow-up hit and then get that death blow. You are going to see so much success from this one tip if you just don't swing the sword that one last time. Tip number five, disengage when needed. Trust me, I know what it's like to have this badass new prosthetic arm and this awesome sharp sword and all these ninja skills, but it's okay to be a scaredy pants every once in a while. A lot of the times you're going to find yourself in a big courtyard with multiple enemies patrolling around different corners, some smaller, some bigger, but don't be afraid to grapple up to the top of the map, scan out where these enemies are, and then start death blowing the enemies from the sky one by one and then grappling back away and playing this nice fun game of hide and seek for a second. And if the enemies do get alerted to your presence, just run away, hide out of cover for a little bit, and those enemies will go right back about their business even if their dead friend is just kind of laying there right on the floor. They don't even ask questions. If things get a little too hot and heavy, fall back, hide for a bit, reevaluate, and then re-engage. Disengaging is okay, even if you are a badass shinobi. Tip number four has to deal with resurrection and dragon rot. Now, one of the very cool and unique things that From Software does with their newest game is how they go about the concept of death. You see, your shinobi has the ability to resurrect himself, but knowing when to come back to life is a crucial piece to this game. If you die, your enemies will sheathe their swords and they will proceed to walk away. And as soon as they walk away, you pull a Frankenstein and boom, baby, that is a free stealth kill for you. Do not be afraid to resurrect. The dragon rot from dying is going to spread anyway. If you do not know what dragon rot is, the cost of resurrection is not free. Each time Sekiro dies, this sickness called dragon rot spreads throughout the world. It's going to spread anyway because you are going to die unless you're great. Now, one thing to know about resurrection is there's two circles on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. The circle on the left is refilled by defeating enemies. The circle on the right is refilled whenever you rest at a statue or, of course, when you die. Now, something to know is you cannot use these in quick succession. The first circle that will be used upon resurrection is always the circle you get from resting at a statue, and you must kill more and more enemies after resurrection to unlock that second resurrect circle in a single life. Tip number three, stealth. Now, if there is one tip on this entire list that I think is maybe the most important, it would be this one right here. With From Software's newest game, they have added in the amazing addition of a stealth mechanic, which gives the players some much needed power to help them control the battlefield. 
one key tip I would give is early on when you have the options to start choosing your skills and building your shinobi the way you want to, I would recommend getting the skills that increase your stealth. You can death blow almost all of the mini bosses at least once by approaching them with stealth and if you increase this skill to give yourself a more stealthy approach, you can find that you're approaching enemies at almost a 90 degree angle and they do not see you. Use stealth combined with disengagement to take care of multiple enemies at once. The stealth mechanic is in the game for a reason. Try it. If you're having trouble fighting something head on and the parry mechanic isn't working for you, try sneaking up from a different route or a different way. Crawl through some, crawl through some bushes or zip line up to some trees. Using stealth is a key feature in Sekiro. Tip number two, the key to good eavesdropping is not getting caught. Now this tip admittedly is one that I thought would be meh, not too important. A lot of games implement the idea of eavesdropping, something like Assassin's Creed comes to mind. But a lot of times, eavesdropping is just a minor feature that can kind of usually be thrown in the back seat. But here in Sekiro, it is anything but. Eavesdropping is a crucial way to get information about the world. Having trouble with the boss? Think about something you might have heard. Another huge tool that Sekiro gives you is the ability to eavesdrop on your enemies. Nearly every single time you have the option to eavesdrop, it is important. You may not know what they're talking about at that exact time, but keep your eyes and ears out into the future, and I am sure that that conversation that you listened about, or listened into, will pay off in the future. Eavesdropping is a crucial piece of Sekiro and something that should not be overlooked. Tip number one, you are going to die. And that is okay. Listen, if you're a Soulsborne veteran, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything new. But if you are, in fact, new to this genre, new to the From Software games, you are going to die. And that is perfectly fine. That is actually a core mechanic of these From Software games. It's why people love these games. Learn from your mistakes what you did wrong and how you could improve. The game may be frustrating, but people love the game because it's fair. This game is fair. As you die, learn the moves of your enemies, learn their patterns. This is the biggest tip that I can give someone. Every single mini boss or enemy has some type of sign, some type of tell that their body will do so you can understand what move is coming next when you can parry, when you need to dodge, when you need to jump out of the way. The game will tell you what to do, you just need to pay attention. Now listen, this is a tough game. I get it, and I love it. There is a ton of mini bosses and real big bads that constantly test your skills. But the feeling that you get when you defeat one of those bosses that's been kicking your booty for the last hour, well there is just nothing quite like it, and no other content creator can do it like From Software can do it. From Software has put out another masterful, beautiful game with Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I am having so much fun, and I hope that these 10 tips were enough to at least get you guys started and rolling with your brand new adventure in From Software's newest game. Me personally, I am loving it. And that's going to do it for our very first episode of For the Love of the Game. I hope these tips were at least somewhat helpful and are able to get you up and rolling with your brand new adventure of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I have been loving this game and I am very curious to see what do you guys think about it. Please leave some comments, some likes, and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And leave some comments down below. Who has been your favorite or toughest boss thus far? And why has that boss been giving you trouble? Let's maybe see if we can get community down in the comments down there. And maybe we can all help each other out to get over some of these pub stomping bosses that we continue to run into. I love this game. I love you all for joining me. Please enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Overly Committed. Yeah, when I feel like there's something to prove yet. When I'm way past